test, test, test. <clears throat> what is going on, guys? Happy Monday. Happy Eclipse Day. And uh, we are live. Depending upon where you are, uh, where I am, it is like peak, technically, eclipse time. Um, what that actually means, uh, if you have the glasses, you can kind of see it. But if you don't, it might be cooler and just a little bit darker outside. But nothing insane. The problem is that when you look at your phone, you can never really see. Obviously, you're not supposed to look at your eyes because you'll blast them out. But um, but yeah, it's kind of cool. And uh, it'll be going on for the next like hour or so. So if you're if you can see it, if it's not cloudy wherever you are. But that said, let us take a look at what's going on in the market today because that's what we're here to do, I guess, right? So silver has been the, you know, where the eyes have, have been drawn a little bit. Um, nice push again. It's it's getting a little more volatile, I'll tell you that. It's definitely getting a little more volatile. We were about 20, just like 18 cents, 17 cents. Um, shy of my silver target. Um, so we'll see if that hits in the next day or two or three or four. Uh, hopefully it does so I can lock those in and then, you know, move on to the next. And then we'll drop a trade recap. I also am in a Bitcoin position. But other than that, we are chilling. Nothing crazy. Um, still do not like what I look around when I see stocks. If you look around and you look at some of the weaker names, I, sh I guess you can say, right? Rivian being one of them. Um, I, I just don't like this price action. It's not momentum. It's trending down, but it's not momentum. Um, Roku, same thing. It's trending down, but not momentum. I was in that on Friday, got out of it or on Thursday, got out on Friday. Kind of glad I did, but looking back, it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. Still might not, but it's still it's up today. So I just I want to see momentum to the downside. We're not getting that, you know. So that's kind of the deal. Apple, on the other hand, um, you kind of do, you kind of do. Um, it's trying to break down, but it's just also not following through. And it could be a great downside trade. Don't get me wrong, but I like the look a lot. I really do, but. I mean, I want to see it break below with volume and it just hasn't done that. So that's the thing. You know, here you are just kind of waiting around for some of these things. And the downside, I'm telling you, I, I'm not a fan. Market's going to keep playing these games. They're just not playing these games. The market's going to keep trending up. I just don't want to mess with the downside. You know, you get a big ass red day and then it's followed up by, you know, two bounce back days. And it's like, okay, well, if we had momentum to the, momentum to the downside, well, we would see further fall through, but you're not getting that. At least maybe not the next day, but the day after that, not really getting it. So it's a good sign to me to avoid the shorts unless, you know, you absolutely, you know, met every criteria, every, checked every box and, you know, probably more on the shorter time frames. I'd say. The, late, the larger the time frame, and the, the more wonky it kind of gets, I think, with the short side. Um, 10 year, kind of the same thing as last week, right? Has a good day up. Then it has an upper wick day kind of oh, rolling back, but generally again, trending up the dollars down a little bit today. Maybe that's helping gold and silver, which are up gold up 0.38 silver up a little over percent. What's going on guys? Yield trades acting. Okay. It's, it's, it seems okay. It's just like, it's, it's just like the market, right? It's it's trending up, but it's like taking its time. Um, elsewhere, Bitcoin. So yeah, I got a Bitcoin. Damn. Um, you know, I just, I'm looking at this and I'm like, I would like to see follow through, and I and I thought I saw a decent volume in this morning on the one hour and then and, and, and the four hour, but it's also somewhat skewed because the past because the weekend you don't get much volume. So people come back to the desks and, and the volume starts popping up. Um, so I got in this morning. Now, like kind of right around where it's at, um, kind of right here on BTC. So I'm pretty much flat on it. You know, we're waiting to see what happens. Right around 72K is the area. And uh, yeah, I, I like the looks of it. Breaking out of the wedge, you know, breaking out of the horizontal resistance level. I had the alert go off. Um, so I like it. Just now I'm looking for follow through and stop loss on it is pretty, to me, it's simple. It's at 60, 69K, which is the low of today, low of this candle. If we fall under 69K, 
It's a no-go. It was you know, a false breakout. Don't bother. Leave it alone. So we'll see if we get the follow-through at some point, maybe tonight, tonight, tomorrow, the next day. Um, Wednesday is CPI. So paying attention to that closely will be good. I mean, something to follow. Um, it, when it comes to CPI, if there was positions, I'd be fine holding through CPI. Depends upon it, swing positions, obviously. Uh, but depends upon what they are, where where they are, all that stuff. But two things, like so if I'm still holding silver and Bitcoin, I wouldn't be opposed to that. Silver, I've moved my stop loss to break even. Bitcoin, my stop loss is where it should be. Um, and if they lose, they lose. I'm not going to, you know, pussy out of uh, of holding it. And really, it shouldn't. It, it'll be a big move, I, I don't, I, I suspect. But more of a stock move, more of an S&P move. Bitcoin will be affected, but I don't think it'll be that big of a deal. So I will hold through. Unless it's very close to my stop loss, I'll just get out uh, and we'll reconsider in a, in a next time. Not that it really matters either there too, because it'll just hit the stop loss when whenever it hits the stop loss and that's it. So you can overthink it. You can underthink it. Depends on how you want to view it, but I, I just keep it. Fr uh, that's my kind of approach is like Coinbase is looking strong and trying to break out. Well, it actually is kind of breaking its downtrend. Some of the signs are starting to point towards that push. So I'll be there for it and uh, we'll see what happens. The other good th thing about it too that gets me or has me a bit more confident on it is that the last couple times that it pushed up in this area and then it had these big, not these big wicks, but it had these wicks. If I go to the one hour chart. This is, I think I traded Bitcoin back then um, on this wick right here. I think there's a trade recap on that. And then it immediately stopped me out like a couple hours later, not even like an hour later. Um, because it's pushed up above and it's held it, I like it. So, so far, so good. It's all you can kind of ask for on the break. I mean, you go to, let's go to a four hour chart. I'm really playing it off the daily. But if you go to the four hour chart, what do you see? I mean, you really just kind of have this area that was a resistance that, you know, we back tested a bit. Now I want to see this, the top of this zone, ideally be kind of the launching pad. And if it pushes through, pulls back, stay, stays above, shows strength. Now I want to see it roll up and push higher in the coming, you know, hours and days. Um, in a perfect world. We'll see if it works out in a per like that, but um, it does look promising to me, uh, despite, especially with the uptrend and all that stuff. So that's the other position, nothing crazy, but that's the two positions. Nothing in, you know, stock wise. There was Google that I was looking at earlier today. I put an alert up for it. It hasn't hit, but here's the, pl the play. I mean, this upper wick happened in the after hours and I don't even know why to be honest with you, um, that happened, but you know, that happened right after our, our live stream on Wednesday. And then, so we'll see what happens. We'll see if they break through. I don't really know if I would trade that, especially with CPI and stuff, cause it'd be more of a swing trade, but yeah, Google is the nicest looking chart. Maybe if it breaks out, you know, it could be a good day trade for something. Maybe if it has momentum on a, you know, tomorrow or something like that. Test is up five. So yeah, we'll see if that can roll up, but I'm not interested in Tesla at all really right now. It's just playing games. Do you see something? I did. I did see the sun. Um, all I really could tell, at least because just I just came in from taking a look, but all I could really tell, I was actually outside for a decent amount of time, but it just got darker and cooler. That's really it. Because it was hot. I was sweating before, like two hours ago when I was outside, and then notably got cooler. The um, thing is like when you, when you, your phone, like at least my phone, iPhone 15 can't really see it. You have to have the glasses to see it, which, you know, if you have them cool, if you don't, uh, you know, it, it, it's where I'm, where I'm at, it's like 80 ish percent coverage uh, you're getting. So it's kind of cool. It's not bad. It's, it's, it's decent, but it's, if you're, unless you're like getting full complete coverage, it's kind of tough to tell. You know, especially if you're like far enough outside, like the main swath of where the uh, eclipse is kind of happening. It's tough to tell other than just seeing it's like notably darker outside and cooler, you know, which is cool. Not a cool, cool as it is, right? Oh, something, something's up. Um, AMD, I think was another one that was catching my attention. Yeah, this is a, uh, this is a potential opportunity, I think. I set an alert 
it'll be kind of the same thing. It'll be more of a day trade idea. I don't think I would hold this. No, I don't think I definitely wouldn't hold this through the CPI. I definitely not. Um, definitely just definitely not. No way. But if it breaks below 165.25 roughly, which my alerts at, you know, could provide a good downside. I mean, you know, that's kind of towards the lower end of the range. It has bounced just below that a couple of times. So be careful of that. But volume profile wise, there's some good room down towards, you know, even below 150. So this is kind of a good area. If this does break down that we could be looking at, you know, AMD kind of falling into. So that's another one that I have my eyes potentially on. And a good thing about that too, is that you do have a clear downtrend. Like you, you at least do for the entire of month, month of March, pretty much. Well, I guess from like the seventh or eighth. Okay. For about a month, about a month of that, which is good. You know, if you're going to take a short, uh, at least in this environment, like at least I want to see something like that. If you have like two days of red, that's, that's like, mm, how much really is that? Like, it's not really that, that notable to me with how the market's, how strong the market's been. So I guess that puts, that puts the attention on Apple. Like, oh, Apple could be a good short. Yeah, it could. If it breaks below, it could be real. Like this, this chart, man, that looks so good for a short. Just the only problem is that market's just in limbo. We're like, up, down, up, down. Like we're not getting anything clear. People in Cleveland going totality now. My sister is in uh, Michigan. She was sending pictures of the, uh, she has the glasses and stuff. And it was like just a little sliver that she sent just a few minutes ago. Rainy and cloudy in Vancouver. <laughs> ah. Yeah, it was supposed to be cloudy here and then it were like kind of cloudy and then it's it was pretty much clear. Some high clouds coming in, but you can see pretty good here right now. Bitcoin miners down by while well, Bitcoin is up. Let's take actually let's take a look. The problem is like yeah, that is down. That does not look very good. CLSK being down 2%. But CLSK, yeah, Mara's down 2.2. Yeah. Hot. That's actually up today. But yeah, you know, it's interesting how this CLSK chart looks really like sketch to me because especially given the context, like you have what you have right now setting up as a bearish engulfing pretty much right like you're completely engulfing friday's candle if we close down here like around the, in the under like 1550 it's a bearish engulfing um the problem is that when i see that and then i see this i go oh maybe there's you know a downside opportunity down into like the you know 11 area but then i look at bitcoin and i'm like um that's going up that's actually kind of breaking out almost like border like it is depends on what you want to look at like you know, you're breaking out of a wedge or this resistance level so you're breaking out there so that when, when i see something like that it's like a, it's it's usually a heavily avoid for me unless you're already in if you're in that's one thing but i would just heavily avoid wait, avoid that because you know the market doesn't have to make sense and we don't need to make sense of it all the time and when it doesn't make sense like that that's fine it is what it is but it's easy to let something like that throw off the mental or your your approach, your mindset to it. And then maybe you're doing something because you think versus your strategy says do this. You know what I mean? And that's the, that's the problem. Like I think blah, 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 Mara is going to bounce. What does my strategy say? Actually, my strategy says short Mara if it breaks below 1750. So when you have the two conflicting thoughts, like, you know, strategy says this, I think this. To me, I felt like that's almost like the sixth sense. You can call it like a left nut sense. I don't know if that's sounds whatever, but like I call it like a, it's like a sixth sense. Like if, if <laughs> you have that weird feeling of like, if, you, if you've been watching charts long enough and you're like, I just don't know, something doesn't seem right. Like that does look like it's fitting my strategy. It fits my criteria. X, Y, Z have been met, but I don't know. It's usually to me, that's just, I, I'm just an avoid. It's a, I pretend I didn't even see it. Pretend that I didn't even see it walk away. And then it can't really hurt you. You can watch it, I guess, after the fact, but 
just for more like screen time, more data, more experience. But it doesn't, I don't think it really, like, because you don't have to do anything. Like that, that's, a, that's the coolest thing. Like you don't have to do shit, you know? And so when, when you feel like you have to, you end up kind of playing stuff by simply not ha having the understanding that like you don't have to do shit and feeling like completely feeling that way and letting that like actually play out in your day to day for weeks and months at a time, you start to breed more of that, but it actually ends up being a net positive because then it cuts down on the dumb shit, which was like the boredom stuff and like the, you know, kind of looks good, but I had a sixth sense. I just didn't feel right about it. It cuts down on like some of those, which many times I find more often than not will end up losing for me. Sometimes they'll work. You never know, but they will lose for me. And then I get, you know, not pissed, but like, you know, you're just like, ah, shit, I shouldn't, have, shouldn't even bother. I should have left it alone. And many times that's, that's the answer. When, especially when you're not in a high momentum environment and when things are not lining up how maybe they were a few days or a few weeks ago, it's like, mm, you know, do you, don't, do you have to do anything? Nah, no, I don't think so. Miners look exhausted. Yeah. Tesla's cooking. It is looking good on Tesla. Yeah. The, the, <laughs> the urges are bad. But it's not like, you know, it's everyone has to experience, you have to experience them, I think, to a degree. That silver chart looks pretty good to me, honestly, dude. That looks like you had a nice, a massive push this morning, or was it last night? I guess last night, this morning, late last night, early this morning. Um, took a nice dive, but then it's come right back into the consolidation right here. So I, I like what we're kind of looking at. Maybe that's going to push up overnight for more. We shall see. Uh, my target, my my take profit is at 28.25, which would be right, like about right, right here. So we got close, just a little bit more. So one more push and we probably get there and we'll see. But I moved my stop loss this morning to break even on it, so it can't lose. Um, but this was taken off the weekly time frame, So I got in, I forget exactly well what day it was. I guess I can find it. Uh, I got in on the 2nd, April 2nd, I believe. And um, we've been pretty much just up from there. It, ha it has had some pullbacks a little bit, but nothing crazy. I've been, I've been pretty much green ever since I got in, which is, you know, ideally how you would want it to work. It doesn't always work that way, but that's in a perfect world what you'd want to see. So that's good. Um, this Bitcoin position, not necessarily I, so much, but also not bad. It's just kind of, it's fine. Like, I don't really, you know, it's... I got in, my average is like somewhere around here and it's just below it right now, but fine, as long as it just holds, you know, the high, I really is, if it holds 70K, we're fine. If it breaks under 70K, I have a stop at 69, but I mean, it wouldn't be the, it would probably be writings on the wall there. If it breaks under 70K, writings on the wall, it's probably not gonna work. Um, so we'll see, we will see. Either way, the market's been pretty like, meh. Look at this action today. Talk about just freaking range bound action. Holy shit. That's the S&P futures. Let me pull up SPY so you can kind of get a reference for the, the range. That's even from, sorry, that's from Friday. You're talking about this afternoon. Holy shit, even tighter. This afternoon, you're talking about one or sorry, 518.67 to 519.48, like a freaking 90 cent, 80 cent range on SPY. Jeez. Uh, good chance in the next 30 minutes that that range will break, which way we'll find out, but it will, good chance it breaks and does something wonky into the close. We've been getting, we've been getting some of that action the past couple of weeks. I feel like, like, like some of these days are like kind of nothing, nothing, nothing. And then boom, nailed. And then it bounces right back. At least you get some, something to look at. <laughs> you know, some of these, yeah, they look back here, back on Mar late March, look at this massive, like nothing all day and then massive push into the close. Not much all day the next day. Big push and then drop into the close. Big gap. Like it's just like all over the place. So chances are we get a little bit of something. We get something, something here. Nothing probably massive, but you never know. That few spot has awesome. I've um I have since recently, not really recently, but no, yeah, definitely more more recently. I um, thought, yeah, this would be kind of a cool car, but for me, I just don't think it's a practical play for my needs and what I would want. So I just don't see the, 
I was saying the thing a couple weeks ago too. I just for me, I don't think it makes sense until they have either like you know 500 minimum mile range, or you have the solar panels on the top so you can essentially charge it while you're using it. You know, without having to go to a charging station. Um, until that's the case, I feel like it's not something that I'm very much interested in. Cars are cool though. Don't get me wrong. They are pretty cool. Lots of pump fakes, yeah. I feel like that's been the case for the past month. Seriously, like the past month, it's been like that. A lot of ups and downs, a lot of fakes. Tesla just bought, or I guess double bottom, you could say, at around, what is that? 160, 65, roughly. 160, 60. Um, yeah, but still heavily in a downtrend. You have all the other like EVs, like look at, well, not all, I guess. Look at Nia. Look at some of these stocks. I, I like we look at some of these stocks like many, 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 many months ago. And then now, like, look at some of these guys. You got a potential downside. Nah, I wouldn't really say, but doesn't look good at all. XPEV. Yeah, it's another one that's breaking down to, to lows there. We know Fisker, bankruptcy, all that stuff, which is funny. You look at Rivian. That's looking, you know, like it's down to new lows. Um, what about Lucid? How is Lucid doing? That's probably getting crushed too, right? Yeah, it's a, it's a penny stock now pretty much. It's a 269 stock. Now, technically, they do have a market cap of $6.19 billion. So market cap is not like a super small cap stock. But, I mean, you look at these these levels, to me at least, and if we break down below 255 pretty much, you're probably heading off to the next level of lows. Maybe down towards 225, even two is possible. You have earnings coming up in about a month-ish, a little bit less than a month, early May. So that would be something you would not want to hold through. At least I wouldn't want to hold through it. But either way, though, thing is weak. So all the EVs in general, um, not good, not good. What's that EV ETF? GR, is it Drive? Drive, what's it called? Cars, K A R S is one. D R I V, yeah. D R D R I V was the one that I remember looking at a long time ago. Driv. Yeah, check it out. It's actually not doing terrible. The problem, not, not the problem. It's not a. Not, it's not a problem. Um, I don't think that. Let's see what it loads up in here. Do they have uh, holdings? Because I don't think this, um, I don't think this is as clean of an EV as you think, play. Like in terms of what they're holding. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look at your top holdings in this, in this ETF. Now, yeah, these companies play a role in that whole industry. Don't get me wrong, but it's not like, you, you go to DRIV and you're like, oh, I'm going to get all EVs. No, you're buying NVIDIA, you're buying Toyota, Microsoft, Google, Qualcomm, Apple, Intel, Honeywell, then Tesla, like seven, eight, nine, ten stocks down, or I guess nine down, you know. So you're not really buying, oh, you got Nikola in there, look at that. You're not really buying, um, just e you're not buying a collection of EV stocks. Cars, ETF, holdings. Let's say like cars. K-A-R-S. Cars. What do we have here? Give me the holdings. Come on, where are you going? Yo. Here you go. Contemporary, BYD Co. I don't even know some of these companies. Samsung. Hey, look at Lee Auto, L-I Auto, or ticker symbol L-I, Lee, is, he, is whatever I think it's called. Tesla, what's L-I, what's Lee doing? Um, yeah, it's holding up a lot better. If you go to cars, though, look at cars. K-A-R-S, ticker symbol a lot worse. Because you have, it's, I guess you have more exposure to those individual companies, whereas... Um, DRIV is more like sector. What's going to drive the sector? Well, semis and tech companies and yada, yada, which have been doing well. So DRIV is done 
much it's held up much better but in the grand scheme though it really isn't has not done much it's the same thing that we talk about though a lot guys i mean like i i this is this is my like whole view about all these things like when you see shit like this it's parabolic it's straight up parabolic you have so much history to look back on in the stock market that, that parabolic rallies like this do not always or do not just continue on forever and ever and ever and that go on and up like eventually what will happen will be in these parabolic rallies you have a long period of either a pullback if it's a bubble and it'll be getting crushed or if it's not a bubble which i don't think this is a bubble by any means but you have a long drawn out consolidation so now in the past you know three years you pretty much have actually done you're actually down technically on your position from three years ago, whereas the S&P is up massively compared to, well, not, it's up decently since then. And you're getting dividends. So, you know, my whole view, like when it comes to like investing is if you are in something that has that is doing this, that is like the universe telling you, hey, lock some gains, take that money, put it somewhere that you can go get a nice solid return. And obviously, there's no way to guarantee that. But right now, that could be treasuries. It could be a high interest account. It could be just sitting cash and waiting so that you have cash when people don't have cash and things inevitably roll over at some point or when a sector gets crushed or when something happens and you want to buy the dip, you have cash to now do that and diversify versus, you know, be all in on this one thing, right? So like when it, like that's, that's my whole, that like that approach alone, I think, over the course of you know a decade, two, three, four decades, will serve you very, very well. Not saying you have to sell everything, but it's like when you see a parabolic rally, and it's not super difficult to see them because you can just look back at history of this stock or this ETF or the S&P or other stocks and ETFs that have done parabolic moves. Think about GameStop, think about Nvidia as of late, think about, uh, I don't know, whatever, like even just like look at what the NASDAQ was doing the past couple of years. Look at some of these rallies and see like, hey, is this parabolic? And is it make sense if I want to have, if I have, you know, a lot of exposure because it's done very, very well. It used to be 20% of my portfolio. Now it's 35, 40% of my portfolio. Do I want to take, you know, 20% off or cut that position in half, take that money and put it somewhere that's weaker, that's not doing as well. Like DRIV right now, is a little more of an interesting buy, right? Because it has not been going up for the past couple of years. Yes, it's generally trending up, sure. Okay, if the market rolls over, yeah, you're probably gonna get hit, yes. But relative to, do I buy tech or do I buy this? Well, I have a lot of exposure to tech, but it's down relative to the NASDAQ, so maybe it's a better buy than the NASDAQ, you know what I mean? That, that's kind of how, from like an investing perspective, I think that's you know the framework that I think would serve pretty well. It's just, it's like the contrarian approach, but with like more stable ETFs or sectors that you're playing off of versus buying individual stocks. By the way, SPY is pushing or breaking the range, right? which we were talking about before. SPY is breaking out of the range. Say 1% coverage. Yeah, it was, uh, I couldn't, I mean, I couldn't really tell to be honest much here. I mean, I could tell, but I couldn't like looking at the sun, you obviously can't tell because Phone doesn't do it justice, and you can't really look at it with your eyes unless you have the glasses. But cool nonetheless. I'm here for, you know, cool stuff. I should have gone for a run. So I should have done. Screw the stream. Should have gone for a run. An eclipse run. That would have been, been cool. Although like it would have looked like any other run. Probably would have felt like any other run. Tesla five percent. Yeah, so Bitcoin hasn't done much since the push. The the Russell today is actually up decently. Everything's barely up. Like the S P is barely up, NASDAQ barely up, Dow barely up. The Russell is actually up 0.76, which is a decent day for the Russell. Now, you know, a decent amount of that was a gap up from where we closed on Friday to then opening here today and, you know, dipped at the open then pushed up. But, yeah. You know what I bought? Not really bought. Um, I bought a little bit more 
or I essentially transferred um, some of my Bitcoin to Ethereum on like Friday or something like that, which looking back, that was like somewhere in here. Now it looks pretty good. Um, I just did that because first off in my Robinhood account, this is my Robinhood account. I had like 0.0000001 ETH or something like that. And for whatever reason, the last time I sold, I clicked like sell all and it didn't sell at all. It left a tiny bit. So like it's been the most annoying thing to have to look at it and say, yeah, I have like the, t I have like a, ne a not even, a, not even a penny's worth of Ethereum. I'm like, can you just like pretend that can I, can I just donate that money to you? I don't even want it. Like, I literally don't even want it. I want my, my account to look cleaner with less positions. You know, it's just one position, but I bought some. So my plan is if we pop a new all time high on ETH, which again, I could have gotten, it doesn't really matter. If we pop a new all time high, I'm going to sell all. And hopefully this time it actually sells all of my Ethereum. <laughs> 2017 2017 was when yeah i remember that one that was i mean i didn't i wasn't in the path but i remember like that being a big a big deal back into the eclipse back then What is the difference between, and I should know this. <laughs> they knew. Lunar and solar eclipse. Lunar eclipse can last for a few hours. Solar eclipse lasts only a few minutes. Moon, uh, so what is the difference? Yes, the lunar eclipse I think is cooler. I think the lunar eclipse is cooler. Solar is great, but the lunar is, is I think, cooler. <laughs> lunar eclipses are more frequent than solar counterparts. There are zero to three lunar eclipses per year. Moon passes through at least a portion of Earth's umbral shadow. <laughs> I feel like you don't hear about those as much, though. If they're more common, you don't hear about them as much. <laughs> Mirrors looking at spy a few minutes, like a couple seconds ago. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Dude, if you if you have been like, I don't know, maybe there's algos and stuff that are crushing right now. Just kind of has that feel that that feel of like when we range trade like this. Oh my god, like they probably crush. But I mean, this is just like almost painful stuff <laughs> to witness. Now, do we break the lows here or do we do we just kind of chill in this consolidation until the end of the day? Are we gonna break these lows or are we gonna just chill? <laughs> but when you look across other ETFs, let's just take a peek at the other stuff going on. So SMH, semiconductors, eh. Not much to talk about. Jets, eh. Cool, TLT is actually up, interestingly enough, today. Barely, it's up a little bit. The 10 years, up also a little bit. Uh, XBI, eh. XLE, that's been strong. That's energy. XLF, just kind of in a consolidation. KRE, bouncing today. XLI, industrials, that is interesting if it breaks above 126.25. XLP, that's come back decently, but it's now consolidating. Real estate, XLRE, eh. Just consolidating. XLU could be interesting if it breaks above 65, 75. XLV, yeah, I'm not interested in that. XRT, similar look. Eh. Eh. A lot of meh action out there, if you ask me. Let's look at small mid caps. Let's see. So by rolling up off of its little low, that eh, looks like it could be, it could it? Maybe it's just, this is a dip buy for SoFi as of late. Um, I personally have a uh, refinance student loan with SoFi, so there you go. No, I don't have SoFi though, um, the stock. Unity software, funny how that's just kind of, this is a spot that it has loved to bounce off of. Maybe it does it again. 
upsurge. When you have a st- when you have stocks like that, though, I I get skeptical, especially around earnings. And you've had these like big dumps off earnings, and then it rallies right back. So just be careful when it has its earnings about like a month out upstart in consolidation nothing much there uh yeah so <laughs> when you look around it's like yeah this is this been this has been the nature of the beast we have not had trending action and it's not been very very clear but that's not a bad thing because eventually it will turn and then uh gives you opportunities but where you have had good action gold look at that look at that beautiful chart gold Poof, beautiful Beautiful, like big push, little flag pattern, pushed, fake push. Then it goes beautiful. You got to love it. Silver tested it, the top of the range, pulled it back, sent it through. Just that's that's where the good action's at. Simple as that. The good action's been on gold and silver and Bitcoin to a degree. Not in the stock market, not in a lot of stocks. Some individual stocks, sure, but not, you know the main boys, the main, you know, larger cap stocks have not been hot, which is not a bad thing though. I mean, this is the, the, the way it works, right? If it, if we always kept going up, 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 here's arc. Yeah. It's just like, eh, what what do you, what do you want to do there? Like I I, I wouldn't touch this at all unless you're already in it. Like (laughs) you're not near it's, it's high of the range. You know, you're down underneath, I guess, the past like two months of the of where it's range yeah where you're at that area but technically we bounced off this area here so i, don't know, I wouldn't be messing with that i would just leave it alone right and pretty much right around this high volume node which is like notorious for less consistent price action price sends a chop around the area that's what it, that's why it's a freaking volume node is price is traded at that price I mean, we've traded at that price so much hence the high volume at that price did i have anything on the lists here uh red list i thought i had two stocks come on lists load up come on dude Spy is going for a potential bust of those lows right there. Yeah. So you had the push up top of the range or broke the little, this little afternoon range. Now we're breaking the downside. Do we get, can we get a snap right back into the middle? Is that going to happen? That would be the tip. That's if that happens part of the course, baby, that's exactly what one would suspect. So spy comes down, breaks low of the range. Now, Get back to the middle of the range, 519 and change. Gets back in there. That's just the same old thing. Now, of course, now it won't happen. Yeah, so Rivian and Roku are the red lists. Um, these are the weaker stocks that I was looking at. Rivian's strong today, so wouldn't I would just not even bother with that. I'm going to get that off the list. Roku, also strong today. I'm also not going to bother with that. Off the list. That's done. The green list, we had Ford. This actually wasn't bad. I could have still been in it. Um, I was in, and it was it got five or actually four cents shy of my take profit level, which was at four or thirteen ninety nine. By the way, it got to thirteen ninety five. Then it came back, and I moved my stop loss up because we were like so close to take profit. I'm like, okay, I moved my stop loss up to break even, so I don't throw with this, and, and then literally just leave it alone. That day, we have a nasty. Dump on SPY, market comes down, hits my stop loss. I didn't lose any money on it, but I didn't make any money on it. And then we play the game of, okay, now what? And it just ended up bouncing off the prior air. So it, it's still fine. It's holding up. Um, I just don't play those games when when, when price does that because, you know, I, it, I was wrong on the timing or something was off. Just I'm not going to – trade's over. My trade's over. Someone else's trade is maybe starting up, but my trade's over. That simple as that. But yeah, I originally had my stop loss at like 13.05, so I would have probably been in. Technically, you could have still been in. But yeah, we'll see. Live to f- I'm going to get that off the list too because it doesn't look good anymore to me. So just a trending. It's trending. It's not momentum breakout action-y you know, type of look. Back to spy, just chilling. See if it can get that back to the middle. 
It'd be funny if it does. Stay hydrated, folks. Stay hydrated. 15, less than 15 minutes ago. I took a video of what I thought was what wasn't the eclipse and then like you can kind of see like the reflection of the of the the sun or like the moon whatever like somehow reflected somewhere on on the phone and it was a little crescent so you can kind of see it but like when you just zoom in on the sun it was just a ball cuz the phone your phone can't like actually zoom in on that not high quality enough um camera but the people who have sick cameras that can like handle that, I mean, there's some pretty pretty cool shots out there. I'm sure you'll see on social media this tonight and stuff tomorrow. My uh, <laughs> the other day was funny. I've tried, and I I can't tell you how I I think it's a much better plot positive than negative, uh, but it's kind of funny some sometimes. So. I've pretty much cut out all news um, through most of my day-to-day life, meaning outside of at the gym when you like the TVs are on and whatever headlines you read sometimes, outside of that and then some stuff may be on social media, but I don't really go on Twitter anymore or X. I don't really go on there anymore. Used to, but I just find that it, it in my experience, is one of the most negative social media platforms that I have ever seen. So I'm like, ah, just like, there's not really anything here that's benefiting me. So I don't really go, I, I just like, there was a point like when I'm like on Friday, I think it was like, I just don't really get news. So, and then sometimes, well, I'll look at the news streamer that I have logged or I, I have on uh, Discord have a couple like more it's like more financial related news but if i'm not looking at this <laughs> and sometimes this will this won't even have news i literally i literally just feel like i live in my own world and i don't, i sometimes have no idea what's going on so i was working on some stuff i wasn't even looking at the market really at all on friday at one point and i remember like just hearing like a couple hours later that there was an earthquake in the northeast which is where i used to live in connecticut and I was like, holy shit, I could have potentially gone like the entire day, had no idea that even happened. <clears throat> it's funny how that, how that works. But I think it's a net positive. Eventually you find things out. Maybe you don't, you know, but then you think about it like in the past, if I was the first one to find out about this earthquake in the Northeast, I don't live in the Northeast anymore. What does it fucking matter? It doesn't fucking matter. So who cares? Same thing with a lot of financial news. You know, if you were the first one to find out, well, I guess earnings is one thing. But same thing, like I don't trade earnings. I don't really care. If you're the first one to find out about the next stock earnings versus finding out a couple hours later in the after hours overnight, who cares? By the way, SPY is doing exactly what we were saying before. Pushed a top, broke the top of the range, came back to the bottom, broke the bottom of the range. Now it's pretty much coming back towards the middle. How funny is that shit? But what I'm getting at is that the news... The way the news tends to work, and I'm not just talking about like mainstream news. I'm just talking about like the general, like things in general. The majority of things that are posted, whether it's political or not, have a negative tilt to them many of the time. More more often than not, I should say. More than half the time. Because that sells, right? That gets people's attention. It sells and then it keeps you watching and it sells ad space and whatever, wherever the platform, online, on actual TV, whatever. But you start to feel, realize like this has nothing, like all that that is doing is framing you to now think 
in this thing in a different way. And that way is generally a way of scarcity or fear or whatever, like things that are, that would hold you back from doing maybe things that you enjoy doing or things that would get you closer to something you want. Right? So there's no point, like there really, there really comes down to, there is absolutely no point in my view to be just like staring and, and, and soaking that stuff in more than you need to. And when I say need to, it's like if you're forced to because you go to a gym when the headlines are on and you run the treadmill and that's all that's in front of your face, okay, it is what it is. You can still put something on your phone. You can listen to music. You don't have to look, I guess. But it's like the more I, I realize as time goes on, it's because it's been an ex, it's like an experiment of like a couple of years ago, that's all I would do. I would sit there and I'd fucking refresh Twitter for hours and hours and hours a day sometimes you know, it would be Saturday at 10 p.m. And I'd be like, oh, shit, let's check fucking Twitter. And I'd be on there for like three hours. And it's like, what am I doing? What am I doing? None of this shit's benefiting me. And it's framing me in a terrible way. Like, I don't need this shit. There's maybe some some weakness now on spot. I don't know. It just makes you think when you... I also, I was reading a new book too about like intent. And the whole con- the whole concept of this was like more like most people walk through the world or walk through society day to day, kind of just like doing whatever, following the crowd, doing whatever. And that's fine to a degree if you know that's what you're doing. Like there's nothing wrong with just going for a walk, chilling, not thinking about anything. If you almost consciously say, hey, I'm just going to go for a walk and I'm not going to, I don't want to think for like an hour, you know? But when that bleeds into the rest of your day and then all these other external forces or other things you know, are, are what's pushing you in whatever directions you have, no, you're no longer controlling the narrative of your own life, which is like, what is that? Like when you think it's, 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 it gets deep, but like, it's like, why, what's the point, right? Of not being in control of your own, your own narrative. You can make your own narrative. You can make your own story, whatever you want to do. Yet, you feel people feel like they can't because of all the a lot of these external forces news judgments opinions which at the end of the day have nothing to do with you at all so my whole view of it all is at the more that i've kind of gotten deeper and also everyone's in different situations in life too i understand this too you go through like there's nothing wrong with like this almost being selfish but you're being selfish in order to be a better X, Y, Z for whatever purpose or reason or person or family member or friend, right? Or whatever. So, I mean, I always thought about that too. And people always said, I always, always was like, yeah, people I, like, I never said I was trying to intentionally be selfish with my time, energy, whatever. But I always thought about that. I'm like, yeah, like sometimes like, you know, you can go through points of life where like you need to be selfish with your time, energy, efforts, focus, all that stuff in order to get X, Y, Z result, which then ultimately pays it back for whoever, you know, maybe you were neglecting during that period. And it's like a, a, an intentional selfishness that's not nefarious in any way. <clears throat> Good, I mean, I'm just getting back. I'm not just getting back, but I just started getting back into like reading again because I haven't really been doing doing that for a long time. I would read here and there, but I think it's something that I need to do more of, especially I think at night prior to going to bed. Instead of your phone, the book comes out. The phone is down at like eight, nine o'clock and the book is out from, you know, that until bed. I go to bed before 10 generally, which is maybe early for some people, but I like getting up at six so or before six sometimes. So I try to keep it as consistent as possible. And even on the weekends too, I mean, I really just enjoy like the consistency at the same time um, pretty much every day because the body naturally will wake up. At, my body naturally now wakes up like 545, six every day, whether I have an alarm or not. And then when you go to bed, later on the weekends or this or that and then you wake up later it just like kind of throws you off because like your body naturally wants to get up but then like oh no it's just sleeping and then you throw off this whole rhythm so as much as it might sound weird because i used to be that person too where in the past where 
Monday through Friday, I would have a you know, routine of going to bed at 11 o'clock, getting up at whatever time. And then weekend came, fuck that. We're going to bed at 12, 1, 2, 3, whatever time I want. And I'm getting up whenever I want, 10, 11, 12. I feel like I just personally feel like a piece of shit when I do that. And then it makes it that much harder to get back on your routine for the Monday once Monday rolls back around. Keep it, keep it as consistent as possible. I mean, you just, I, you just feel better. That's my experience. Test it out. I mean, you just, I just feel better. Sharper, more energetic, more, you know, whatever. Better. I wouldn't want to live any other way. <laughs> the filter for the 60% here at Tampa. That's still pretty good. 60% um, eclipse. So, spy we're looking at just there the that's there that's really all i mean I, the, the the russell's come back yeah everything's kind of coming back a little bit now where we're finishing the day like just barely red if it bounces a bit into the close it might finish green but we're pretty much red if i go to finviz quick what does finviz got for us here you had a, you actually have a pretty decent advancing day 62 percent of or almost 63 percent of stocks advancing today so despite maybe a red across, no, nah, despite flat-ish, and then the Russell's up a lot. So probably small caps are where that strength is at, I would guess. Tesla and small caps is where your strength is at today. Some banks maybe down here, but yeah. Otherwise, pretty chill. Pretty chill. Tomorrow the plan is to do a stream in the morning. I will not be able to stream on Thursday morning. Um, I'll be able to stream on Thursday afternoon though. That is for sure. So we got a stream on Thursday afternoon. We'll get a stream tomorrow morning. And then really, so tomorrow morning at the open, then we'll do Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, power hour streams. So same time as this. That is the plan, Stan. Flip a running into Home Depot. <laughs> I love it. I was tasked with a, uh, so right now I'm watching my, essentially my family's two dogs. So I was tasked with my parents left on a trip so I'm like, okay, I got to watch dogs, walk the dogs, you know, once a day, have a nice little hike, whatever, if I can and stuff. So then <laughs> my mom texts me, whatever. She's like, yeah, the, the laundry machine or washing machine is messed up. Can you take a look at it? I go back there. I'm like looking at it and like the hose thing on the dryer came off. And I'm like, I'm fucking not a handyman. I have no idea what I'm doing. So I go back there. I'm like, and they're like in a different country right now, trap flying. So I mean, whatever. <laughs> and I'm in there with a freaking, I'm like, she made it sound like it was a simple, just like reattach it and it should be fine. I was like, no, I got to get the freaking screwdriver, the freaking drill bit here. Like I'm reattaching shit in the back. I had no idea what I was doing. Like, I'm like, I got to almost go to Home Depot to get the tools for the job. I'm like, geez. But it's all good. Home Depot or Lowe's? That's the question. That is the question. If you had the option to go to, you had both them, one on this side of the street, one on that side, which one are you pulling up to? I don't, I don't know what I would do. I don't know. I think I've heard from a more political standpoint that Lowe's would be more liberal than Home Depot. Like if you were more of a liberal person, you would go to Lowe's. If you were more conservative, you would go to Home Depot. That's what I've been told. And I think it kind of makes sense. Although maybe that's just my mind thinking blue and thinking orange and red, you know? <laughs> I don't know. I don't really care about, I don't think that way. But a lot of people are hyper-focused on politics and like, you know, and that stuff. So some people get a little, you know, too too wild when it comes to that shit. 
Used to be a low sky, but I'm a depot guy. <laughs> I love it. I didn't know too. Like, at least when I was moving, um, and getting boxes was a year, like a year and a half ago, kind of. In Texas, went to a Lowe's to get like boxes. It was what was closest by. I didn't realize they have a lot of like cleaning products, like paper towels, like. I didn't know that they had that shit. I thought that was just like, I don't know, hardware and appliances and shit like that. <laughs> the cheaper deal. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that's how I view it. I don't really care. Whatever has got what I need. I'll look it up online usually first and then go. Honestly though, nowadays, I just buy everything on Amazon. Whether that's good or bad. I, I, I just find myself on freaking Amazon for, uh, I need this. All right. Boom. Amazon need that Amazon. I'm not like, I don't even bother with you and going anywhere to like some, most of the time, unless it's a physical thing that you need to, to feel before you buy it, you know, they got all sorts of good stuff. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. I was like, ah, oh, shit, we can get freaking paper towels at Lowe's. Let's do it. No idea if these are cheaper or not than at whatever grocery store I would go to usually, but fuck need them let's get them <laughs> so all right the, the question to me now is check out that weekly chart on coinbase by the way that looks coiled for more like it wants more um silver how does that do into the rest of the week gold and silver how strong are those guys going to be Bitcoin, which is like kind of trying to break out, but does it actually have the follow through? We will see. It looks like it, it has, it's got a decent candle. This is not a bad candle, but at the same time, need the follow through. So with that said, I'm going to wrap things up. Be back in the morning tomorrow. We will see. I have two positions on Bitcoin and silver. So that's where we focus on, I guess. Um, but they're also, they are swing positions. Silver's on the weekly and Bitcoin's on the daily. So big picture swings. We'll see how those go. Other than that, I'll see you guys next one. Enjoy your Monday. Hope the eclipse was great and I'll see you soon. Peace.